Growing up, I was big into Spider-Man. And Spider-Man had this ability to sense when he was in danger. He called it his Spidey sense. Well, it turns out that the Japanese have something similar in their martial arts. It's this mystical ability to sense when someone intends to attack you. And in the Bujinkan, there's a test for it. It's called Saki. So what is Saki? And is it a real thing? Saki literally translates to killing energy, but it might be better translated as killing intention. It's used to describe the sensing of when someone intends to attack. This is not just in the Bujinkan, but in many older Japanese martial arts. However, in the Bujinkan, there is a unique ceremony where a practitioner must demonstrate their ability to sense this. The test determines whether a student achieves the rank of Godan, or fifth degree black belt. And at fifth degree, students are able to teach on their own and open their own school. This is how the test usually goes. The person administering the test, the one projecting the Saki, stands behind the person taking the test who is kneeling in front of them. They both close their eyes and the test giver raises the sword and then suddenly they cut down. It's the job of the person taking the test to sense the exact moment they need to narrowly roll out of the way to safety. If they roll too soon, the test resets. Too late, and they get hit and fail. While on face value, it may seem metaphysical and is sometimes presented that way, it's really not. In fact, there's a fairly simple explanation for what Saki really is and how we sense it. But before we jump into the what's happening, we have to remember that this concept was developed a long time ago. And we didn't have the same understanding of science or the natural world as little as 50 years ago, much less a couple hundred. So let's just get this out of the way. No, there's no energy that is given off by someone's thoughts that you can sense with your brain. If you were living in feudal Japan, you'd be forgiven for thinking that's the case. But we know scientifically today that's not a real thing. But to some degree, we are wired to read each other's minds, at least to a point. I'm married, and there will be occasions where I come home to my wife and I can tell something is wrong. But of course, when I ask her what's wrong, she says, I'm fine. After some time prodding, I can usually get her to open up and find out what I did wrong. But am I a mind reader? Was she projecting some kind of energy with her thoughts? Of course not. But I could sense that she was upset without her saying anything specific. I could just feel it. Maybe there's someone you've run into who gave you a bad feeling. Maybe at a bar or at work. It wasn't something they specifically said or did, but you still felt it. Were you reading their mind? How about when you're driving and you know the person in the lane next to you is going to turn on their signal and try to squeeze in front of you? And sure enough, they do. Well, how did you do that? These things happen because we are wired to communicate through many ways, not just using words. And we can read situations and behaviors to make pretty accurate predictions, even when we're not really thinking about it. So for example, micro expressions are facial cues that people flash across their face that can reveal their inner feelings. Body language can signal how someone is feeling or what they intend to do. Behaviors within context can provide insight as well. Call it energy or vibe or even tells, but it's a real part of human communication. We do this every day on a subconscious level. And it turns out your subconscious can be pretty accurate. Malcolm Gladwell describes this in his book, Blink, The Power of Thinking Without Thinking. In it, he provides examples and studies behind our subconscious can make rapid and accurate conclusions. He calls it thin slicing. Basically, your subconscious takes a thin slice of inputs from what you're experiencing. It compares it with prior experiences, makes a prediction, and manifest that prediction as a feeling. Getting a bad feeling from someone, odds are your subconscious is 
picking up on clues and predicting a bad outcome or threat. A very cool example in the book is where an expert on a particular sculptor was able to spot a fake with just one look. The museum didn't believe him. They had already verified it through rigorous testing and sampling. Yet he was certain, well, that there was something wrong, that it was a forgery. When asked what was wrong with it, he said it just didn't feel right. They took a deeper sample of the statue and it turned out that it was indeed a fake. So how could one glance beat a rigorous testing procedure to identify a forgery? Well, this person had spent a good portion of his life looking at this sculptor's work. He had fed his subconscious tons of inputs on how this artist sculpted. Then it took one look at it and his subconscious could immediately tell within a sl thin slice of data there was a mismatch. But because it wasn't a conscious thought process, it can only manifest as a feeling. This is what Saki is trying to describe. The feeling you get when someone is about to attack you. And assuming you train in a martial art, you build experience of people attacking you so you can learn how to sense it in real life. Okay, so how does that work with the Bujinkan's Godan test? Well, you're just eliminating sight as an input. Instead, you have to rely on your other senses, particularly sound, to predict an attack. But you're not looking for just a particular sound or particular thing. It's allowing your subconscious to pick up on when a strike is coming. I myself took the Godan test with Noguchi Sensei and managed to pass. You often get asked afterwards what you felt in the moment. For me, it felt like when Noguchi swung the sword, he was gripping my spine. Like my spine was a lightning rod. When I told this to Noguchi Sensei, he replied, interesting. Well, no two people feel the same thing. But I am not metaphysical. I come from a science background. I don't believe in sensing energy. So I was pretty unsatisfied with not being able to understand why I felt what I felt. What really happened? I kept running through the test in my head. Then I read Blink by Malcolm Gladwell and things clicked. I figured out that I heard Noguchi's grip tighten on the sword as he prepared to swing. That's what set off the chain reaction. My subconscious picked up on that and told my body to prepare for the swing by giving the feeling I described. So while in the moment I wasn't conscious of the specifics of what was happening, I just knew I felt something. My subconscious had taken a thin slice of inputs and sent the danger signal to get out of the way. Now some outside observers will say that the test is rigged. The teacher can simply hit you if they decide not to project their intention. First and foremost, of course it's rigged. If by rigged you mean a teacher can choose who gets to pass. There was one group I remember that took the test, all first thoughts. They thought they could skip to fifth degree if they managed to pass the test. That's a big no-no. Hatsumi Sensei then decided he was going to give the test. The first one sat before him and without warning, he smacked them on the head. He casually looked at the next in line and said, next, the next person sat down and the same thing. Then again, and again. The last couple guys could read the writing on the wall and decided not to take the test. Hatsumi Sensei seemed pleased at their decision and said, yes, you must be fourth done to take the test. Now, they may have been able to sense Saki, but they weren't going to pass that test. That's because a lot of this is ceremony as much as it's a test. And passing the test isn't the only requirement to achieve fifth degree. You need to be a fourth don to take the test. You should have a decent reputation in Japan. And you should have a decent relationship with your teacher. But I have also seen people with all of the above in spades not sense it and fail just the same. It's not an easy test. You have to time your roll just right to get out of the way from a person behind you swinging a sword at your head and often with a hundred people watching you but it's also not magical. It's an old explanation to something real that they didn't really understand. They just knew that people who fought a lot could start to sense when an attack was coming. 
Train in any decent martial art long enough and you start to pick up on those cues. But the Godon test in the Bujikan is also about ceremony. Dodging the sword is just a part of it. So now I leave it back to you. Do you think this is an accurate explanation of Saki? Did you take the Godon test? And if so, does this help explain your experience? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.